So, <clears throat> hello everyone. My name is Per Gostrand. I'm a technical specialist for Autodesk. Infrastructure and construction is my background. Uh, today, I'm here to um, to talk about the in AEC collection. So, 1st of August 2016, Autodesk launched the industry collection, ending the sales of suites. And uh, the industry collection comes in three flavors. It's a media and entertainment collection, it's a product design collection, and it's a AEC collection, architecture, engineering, and construction. So, of course, in this webinar today, I will cover the AEC collection. Uh, I will talk you through the products that's included in the collection and how the workflow between the products can be used to make you more efficient in your projects. But first, I would like to give you some background and trends. So, today we are living in a 24-7 mobile multi-device world and users really expect to stay connected to their data no matter what the device they're using. So, I mean, today we're using iPads, different tablets, iPhones, we're using desktops. And because of this, the demands is there to really have the same sort of experience on our mobile devices and our desktops. So, and at the same time, software users expect continuous updates. They, they want to see when updates are available. They want to understand what has changed in the different versions you're using and to really to be able to decide themselves when to incorporate the changes into their business. So today we also see that the industry really embrace and like the pay-as-you-go model, which has kind of less financial risk and it really allows companies to match their software needs with the business cycles. And in fact, many of our customers with project work, they really prefer the flexibility of charging the subscription to a particular project. And finally, the rise of the cloud as a software platform is, is really disrupting the entire industry. It's changing the way software is created, it's changing the way software is delivered, and it's changing the way how we solve all the new problems. And today we see there is a lot of new software companies out there that offer subscription-only services. I'm sure you're familiar, familiar with example like you know Netflix, HBO, Spotify, etc. And also long-standing companies like Adobe and us, Autodesk, we are all shifting to a subscription-only model. So subscription today is really the new normal. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the key benefits with Autodesk Industry Collections. So, value. I mean, the, the industry collections provide value that well exceeds the premium suites at a very competitive price point. It offers more flexibility and choices. So, with the industry collection, you can choose between single user and multi user access. You can also choose different term length, so you can choose to subscribe monthly, quarterly, annual, and multi-year, etc. And this gives, of course, a, a much greater flexibility to choose the option that fits your business needs. Uh, it also, also offers simplicity and interoperability. And the simplicity of the offering is, of course, you know, with three different collection, it makes the decision and per case process much easier. So no more suites to choose from. It's it's one collection that that is the offering. And also as a design solutions interoperability and the integrated workflow between the different products that's included in the collection, it it continues to to develop. And um, that's really a huge benefit when working with a collection. And I, I will show some of those integrated workflows on the webinar today. Okay, so really to con conclude the, the beginning here and the, the industry collection story, uh, we, are, we have moved from 20 plus suites to three industry collections that offers the most essential Autodesk software for your industry. Uh, this software will evolve and get better over time and you get access to continuous uh, updates. You get access to more cloud services and then you have the flexibility that I talked about, the different term length and the ability to choose between 
senior users and multi-user access. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start to what's included in the AC collection. So these are all the solutions that you have uh, in the AC collection today. Uh, we have Revit, we have Infoworks, we have Navisworks Manage, we have Formit Pro, we have Insight, we have Recap, we have rendering in, in the cloud, rendering in A360 as it's called, we have structural analysis for Revit, we have vehicle tracking, we have 3ds Max, and we have a cloud storage of 25 gigabytes that's included. Uh, and of course we have all the AutoCAD and the AutoCAD verticals and here we have really important solutions like CV3D, we have AutoCAD architecture, electrical, map 3D, MEP, PNID, plant, raster design and uh, utility design. So these are the solutions that, that's included today and here we, when you use this you get continuous updates etc. Okay. I talked before a little about the interoperability and the integrated workflow that you get access to when you're purchasing the AC collection. So the strategy we have at Autodesk and the AC collection is really to cover the whole project life cycle from conceptual design to construction and to build the product so you will benefit from your design in early stage when you move on to detail design. So we really want to minimize your workload with you know, files and different file formats and saving and uploading files and we want to have products that talk to each other. So we see it as very important to start with BIM immediately in your products from day one to be able to take the right decision at the right time and to avoid rework and remodeling in the different phases of the project. And this is really, this is very important to understand with the with AC collection, the, the benefits you get with these workflows from, from conceptual design to construction. So I will spend some time now to, to give you some examples on integrated workflows. And I want to start with, yeah, what you always start with when you, when you um, start a new project with existing conditions. So capturing existing conditions, that is kind of part of every job. You know, what is the topography and how it changed during a project? And if we take a look at traditional survey, that's, it's, it's expensive, it's time consuming, it can be dangerous at sites and close to, to traffic. There are often areas that's really hard to access. So if we take a look at existing condition and look at geological surprises, so that's a major reason that projects are delayed and go over budget today. And discrepancies and difference between ground condition and early service estimate, that can also require really costly last minute changes in the project. So today we see a lot of new techniques that really integrates high definition photos, 3D laser scanning, a GIS system that really can change this traditional way of working. And we see that together with new hardware such as drones and UAVs. So the last couple of years, if we take a look at point clouds and, and reality capture technology, we have progress the last, I would say, three, four years from non-intelligent black and white sparse point clouds of two million, two billion pixels to really intelligent, visually appealing content of 60 billion plus pixels. And photogrammetry, as you see here in this video, you know, we have today high definition cameras and we have the drones, I made an example of this, I show here possible, with the use of our software that's called Recap 360, that's included in the, in the AC collection. So <clears throat> the drones here are used to capture as is conditions to bring it into design. You know, for drone prices has gone down rapidly and, and can now be used at a very large scale. So it's cheaper, it's fast, and of course this makes it repeatable at another scale than traditional serving. And in the end this gives more accurate data. So <clears throat> from a technical perspective, 
we are capturing point clouds and photogrammetry using third-party products. We are using photos, uh, cameras and get photo output files. We are using scanner to get scanning output files. We import and process this data using Autodesk Recap where we can register and clean the scans and photos. After that we can push the data to our design solutions such as CV3D and Revit and Infoworks and Navisworks to continue our, our design. And <clears throat> here we have some just a video that shows some example of how you can refine and how you can work with your, your scan data in Recap. Recap. You can look at sections, you can do measurement, you can even pick objects in, in, in your scan data and remove it, for example walls and other objects. So really it's about refining the data before you use it in, in, your, in your design tools. Other benefits with the integrated workflows between Recap and other products is how we can use, for example, Navisworks design to bring that into Recap to view as built with the design. So in this case, customer BAM, they have built the structure of the building. You can see the walls, the pillars, and the beams. And you can see how the design MEP installation with pipes and ducts can fit into the capture as built environment. So here we are really using the scan data to compare the design during, during the construction. So a great way to re review as build with the design. So reality capture has improved a lot. It can be used to capture all sorts of existing condition, both in early stage of your project before design, but also during construction to review progress and compare as build against the design. And, and looking at the AC collection, it's, it's uh, our reality capture solu solution recap is included. And, and uh, <clears throat> there is where you start and, and refine your, your data. Okay. So <clears throat> then the next step in, in your process is design. So I'm moving on to design. And I would like to start with conceptual design. With, with conceptual design for transportation and building, we have solutions in the AC collection that's called InfraWorks and Formit 360. And with those solutions, you can start directly with BIM from, from day at, for, from day one for transportation and building. I want to start with Autodesk with InfraWorks. So <clears throat> InfraWorks is a solution for conceptual design of roads, of bridges, of drainage and sites. You can do visualization really easy with this solution. You can collaborate with uh, yeah, your internal project members and also external stakeholders. You can work with proposals and you can do different analysis and, and simulation. You can look at traffic simulation, uh, site distance, you can do flood simulation and different type of quantifications. So <clears throat> let's say you start a new project and you have very little data or, or no data at all. InfoWorks has something that's called the model builder. So I start this video that show, shows model builder. It's, it's kind of like Google Maps that you can choose your location. So in this case, I you can also search for location. So I search search for Helsinki, Finland, and you can pick an area that's 200 and square kilometers. <clears throat> we choose a name for the model and we create a model. So in, in a matter of a few seconds we will get an email saying that the model is created and it's ready for use in your design. So what we do, we can see on the top left we have the model and then we can download and progress the model. So I've speeded up this video because it takes around 10 minutes. So that means that from, from no data at all uh, within 10 to 15 minutes, 
you have a model that almost, in this case, 200 square kilometers of Helsinki. So mobile is really a great help to get you started with BIM from day, day one. It's for urban planner, for architects, for civil engineers, for everyone that wants to start from, you know, scale one and get the 3D model of existing situation. So as I said, this model uh, of this area from, from Finland takes less than 50 minutes. And uh, we get data, InfraWorks, in InfraWorks we get, we get data of building and roads from OpenStreetMap and raster images from, from Bing Map and, and then terrain data from SRTM Digital Elevation Database. So after this you can start your conceptual road, bridge, drainage or site design. Uh, I showed scanning before, so if you have one area you want to start to detail, then you can bring in your recap, your scan data to this specific site to continue to kind of fine tune your terrain. So this is called model builder in, in InfoWorks. So <clears throat> let's say you want to start, you have you have taken your data from model builder, you have maybe got scan data from, from recap, and now you want to start with site design. So let's say you have a drawing with uh, with parcels in, in AutoCAD, and parcels can be you know property borders, for example. Now you can you can take this data and bring that directly into InfoWorks and start your to do accurate site design. Let's say you are a house builder and you want to visualize your design. So in this case, you bring in the parcels to InfoWorks. And here you can see that we get the same data and you get the areas as well. Then in InfoWorks you can start to do your drainage design, your road design, and if you have bridges, for example. And if we're talking about roads, we have some things called component roads. So this is really that you build up your road with components. So you have your alignment, you have your profile, you have your lanes, and then you can start to add sidewalks and, and sloped areas, you can add curb stones, and this is really a model-based kind of visualized appealing way of working in, in, conceptual, in conceptual design. And the importance here is that you get the it's the right engineering so you can you can work with your slopes and super elevation and the right width and heights of curbstone, etc. So here we can see just quickly how we have a road with curbstone, a grass area and a sidewalk. And then we can take a look at the cross-section view and follow the design. And if you are a building owner, I mean, you can bring a wide range of files to InfraWorks. So let's say you're a building owner and you're modeling houses in Revit or, or other 3D modeling tools. You can bring that into InfraWorks and place it either by the right coordinates, of course, or as a show here, drag and drop where you can, you know, play around with the location and the size. You can rotate it. You can, you can place it and you can duplicate and, and copy the building. You can, of, of course, also change facade of the houses. So if you want to, if you want it to be more realistic, you can add uh, different facades to it. Or if you want to be only conceptual, you can work with, you know, it says a white box, for example. And finally, you see here I build up <clears throat> uh, the area of houses. So you can add, you can add objects like cars and and trees and and light poles, etc. <clears throat> and then in InfoWorks you can work with different proposals. So you have the same model and you work with different proposals to to, to collaborate with your with your stakeholder. So you can see in this case we have about one, two, three, four different proposals. 
It's a really easy and flexible way of working when you have different alternatives. And then you can start to do some analysis of the design. You can do the traffic simulation and traffic animation. How does this new area affect the traffic in, 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 on, the <clears throat> on a certain area outside this? And you can also do some terrain statistic and, and measurements in InfoWorks. So I'm just going to show show it here with this video. You can do, for example, point to point distance. You can measure to the distance and get slopes. And you can also get terrain statistics and, and volumes. So you have cut and fill volumes of the road, for example, and you can also get that from from different areas you are working with. So in this case here you can see we get statistics of 2D area and 3D area. We get the volume, the cut, uh, the fill and it calculates uh, the, the nets. So kind of all you need for doing, for doing conceptual design. Okay, <clears throat> so I talked about the workflows between the products and in in Infrarex it has really great interoperability between between CV3D. So we can take a look at this example. I don't know how many of you that have designed roundabouts. Uh, roundabouts in, in 2D in let's say AutoCAD can be very time consuming. And now with with Infrarex in the AC collection, you can really start real quick to do a conceptual design for for let's say a roundabout that you can that you can bring into CV3D. So this is just an an example on the integrated workflows between the solution. So with InfoWorks you can work with all the the data. You can sh change the the plan. You can change the profile. You can change the uh, the bearings. <clears throat> you can change the slopes. The lane width. And you can change the elevation of the of the roundabout, and you can also check the swept path analysis. So you can see that the the right vehicle can can move through the intersection and the roundabout. And then the great thing is that when you have done this, you will bring it into CV3D, and all the work you have done that gets kind of reward in CV3D. So in CV3D, when you work with roads, you work with alignments, profiles, and assemblies, and you build up a corridor. So here in this case, <clears throat> we open the model from, from InfoWorks in CV3D, and all the different surfaces, the corridor of the, of the um, roundabout is included. We get all the different alignments and the different profiles done in InfoWorks that comes right through to CV3D. So if you compare <clears throat> compare the time it takes normally to make for example a roundabout, now with this integrated workflow it's much more time efficient. And in CV3D you can continue to to uh, fine-tune your design and, and really analyze the surfaces Etc. Etc. And continue to work with your different arms in the in the roundabout. <clears throat> Another example I have from from Infoworks, kind of the last example, is when you're working with bridges. So <clears throat> with bridge design, you can start with conceptual bridge design, working together with your road designer. You can add a bridge, and you can work with the right assembly, with the right super elevation, with the right profiles. You can work with clearance, etc. <clears throat> and you can work with with the pillars and fundaments and girders. And you make you can make analysis on the road and on the bridge. So you can also get quantifications for the different elements at the bridge and make cost estimations only using InfoWorks. So 
it's it's all about the same concept the conceptual design in infoworks be able to take the right decision be able to get quantities and the right type of of data that you need to be able to make the right decision before you continue to detail design <clears throat> so here you can see that you can check the components and you can get the quantities and then if you are continuing with detail design in in Revit we have uh, it's only as simple as this it's one button sent to Revit so show it there in this in this video you press send to Revit and Infoworks create the Revit elements the families Revit opens and we get the model in Revit where we can continue with detailed design. So it makes it possible for you to design and take the right decision at the right time and <clears throat> furthermore it, the most important the design you do in conceptual design the BIM from day one you really can take advantages from that and you don't have to do a lot of remodeling and rework. Okay, so <clears throat> I've showed quite a lot about Infoworks. It's because it's really added a lot of value to this, uh, to the portfolio, to the AC portfolio, and to the industry in terms of conceptual design and large areas visualization, and it can be used for almost every different disciplines. So Infoworks started as a visualization tool with basic road features some years ago and it is now really developed to a more advanced solution with engineering capabilities that makes it possible to take to take the right decision at the right time and you can modeling road sites drainage etc etc so infoworks is is really continued to transition to an engineering design authoring tool and and this platform for for transportation and, and civil infrastructure projects and then then <clears throat> CV3D is a solution for, for detailed design. So CV3D is really important in the AC collection. Uh, CV3D is, is being for infrastructure in detailed design. It's here we can do, we do survey and data collection, we can work with surfaces, we can work with road and rail corridor models and alignments and profiles. We work with pipes, sections, parcel design, I showed you a little before about that. We have something that's called a subassembly composer. I think you can you can see it here in the middle of the screen where we have a retaining wall that we can with the help of subassembly composer we can build up a retaining wall with the yeah exactly as we want it and we can tie that to an alignment or to a to a to a profile and, and build up 3D models in that way. And then we have something called Civil View, and that's just another integrated workflow with 3ds Max. So we can push the corridor, we can push the design in Civil 3D to uh, 3ds Max to make really stunning visualizations. Uh, <clears throat> in in AutoCAD Civil 3D, it's a, it has feature for analysis of surfaces, uh, earth rock calculations, quantity takeoffs. It's here we plan and design urban drainage systems and storm sewers and, and work with size inlets and piping and culverts, etc. So everything about uh, drainage and, and uh, drainage systems is, is made in CV 3D. Vehicle tracking, that's also part of the, the AC collection, that's now integrated in CV 3D. So, I showed earlier about how you can fight tune and work with detailed design for your roundabout. Uh, vehicle tracking is really the, the solution for swept pass analysis, where you can op work and optimize your design for vehicles. And and of course you can do this in your design, but also at at construction site and see if your different uh, vehicles can access your sites. So you can do a swept pass analysis. It's it covers as yeah extensive vehicle library. I think it's 500 and plus vehicles in the library, and also you can you can animate the design as see here. And in the end of the day, a set of construction documentation needs to be produced. So 
in, in CV 3D, you can do plan and profile and section sheets that's dynamically linked to the design. So when you're working with your design, all changes you are doing, that can that will automatically be, be shown on your on your plan profile and section sheets. So so you're really keeping documents synchronized with, with your design. In CV 3D you can also send data to machine guidance. So getting closer to the to the construction and send the, the design to the, the construction teams. Okay, so we're talking getting close to the, the construction. We are talking about design for infrastructure. We are going to construction and then Navisworks Manage is a solution that's included in the AC collection. In Navisworks you can do design review you can do clash detection, you can really do advanced clash detection in Navisworks. You can uh, you can do hard clashes, but also avoid, work with avoidance and set different rules for your clashes. You can do 4D and 5D simulation, and you can also get quantification, list of quant quantifications take off from your models within Navisworks. So, when you're planning for construction, you really can link scheduling pro uh, programs like Microsoft uh, Project, Asta or Primavera to a 3D model in Navisworks and use this to visualize a plan. So this is a video that shows that. Uh, you can see construction of a bridge being linked to a schedule. You can see the, the time on the, on the top left corner. So of course this can be used for coordination to identify issues in the program by looking for scheduling conflicts. For example, ensuring there is enough time between different construction parts or to see if a trade is impending on another space. So you can start you can start compare planned dates to the actual dates, identifying in advance problems yeah, days a week before they occur allowing you to change resourcing or, or the program to compensate. Of course you can use it to start collecting progress data and compare with schedules. Okay, so <clears throat> that was a lot about the workflows from conceptual design in InfoWorks combined with Revit for bridges and CV3D for roads and railways and push to Navisworks where you can do collaboration, class control, quantifications, etc. If you start to look at conceptual design for building, in uh, the AC collection there is included a solution that's called Formit. Uh, I have a video that shows the potential of Format. Uh, it might go a bit fast and uh, I, I really wanted to include it so you get a sense of what you can do. So, so with Format you can start your building design in, in a really conceptual way. Really quickly you can start with, with your buildings, with urban areas from anywhere on, on tablets and also on, on desktops. So wherever you are, you can start your conceptual design. You can work with our solutions like Dynamo, a Sketchbook, etc., to do really great sketches here. And you can also bring that to Revit for further 3D modeling and develop of your solutions. So as I said, you can work on it on, on Windows, on web, and on iPads. And of course, you, if you want to put this in a larger context, your models, you can also bring that into InfraWorks. You can do different analysis in, in really conceptual phase. So if you think about the model builder that I shown, showed before in InfraWorks, if you take think about sketching <coughs> houses and building in, in format, you can really in a quick way start with, with BIM from day, day one and bring in your your um, 
your formid models into InfraWorks. And then you can move on with your building design into into form into Revit. Okay. okay. I guess most of you know Revit. That's also included in the AC collection. That's really <clears throat> the most powerful BIM solution for for uh, architects, for uh, MEP designer, and for for structural and construction. <clears throat> so if you look at the latest release of Revit, Revit uh, 2017, it's the fastest and best performing release we have yet. So there is done quite a lot of, uh, we call it behind the scenes optimizations and improvements to, to a lot of functions that really helps the most demanding user. So, there's been a lot of focus on, on increasing the performance for Revit because it's handled very, very heavy models. So the improvement on this last, uh, uh, last 2017 version it's been, many has been improved by as much as 20%. And if you look at view when refresh, refresh and user navigation, it's up to 4.5 times faster than b before. So <clears throat> Maybe not a lot of new function in 20, 2017, but, but the performance is definitely improved. So together with a solution called Insight 360, that's also included in the AC collection, you can optimize the building performance, so you can do simulations for whole buildings, energy, heating, cooling, daylighting, and solar radiation, etc. Also what works with, with Revit in the collection is it's a solution that's called Autodesk 360 structural analysis. And here you can do gravity and stat static analysis in the cloud. Uh, it has robot structural analysis as a calculation engine, and you get uh, result packages in, in Revit. So with structural analysis, you can perform gravity analysis as part of your process at an early stage of your design. So the structure don't have to be complete. You do this during the early design. You can, for example, check the consistency of the models, if the beam are supported correctly by the columns, which beams are supporting what loads, etc., etc. And <clears throat> once analysis is conducted, results can then be visualized and explored within Revit, and you can get detailed reports from the software. I see I just have the front page here in the in the right right corner, the gravity analysis report. So structural analysis for Revit, and that's also of course included in the collection. Then just a few words, we have the AutoCAD verticals, I talked a lot about CV3D, we have, we have electrical, map 3D, MAP, PNID, plan 3D, raster design and utility design, that's this Detailing solutions in 2D and 3D, that's also included in the in the solution. And we have 3ds Max included. 3ds Max is our solution for high-end visualization. You can do uh, stunning images and videos, and you do that from from um, yeah, you can do that from InfraWorks, from CV3D, from Revit, uh, and, and Navisworks. I'm going through this quite quick. We also have, as I told, the cloud rendering service that's included. And with this, you can make quick, high quality renderings. Uh, these are also available for Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks, and 3ds Max. And this is really to, to get you this, to make the cloud do the rendering instead of doing it on, on, your, on your machine. So that's the, the purpose with the cloud rendering. And you'll all also get online storage. So what you get here is 25 gigabytes of storage. You get model viewers. This is this is Autodesk 8360. You get you can sync to the desktop, and you, you can easily share your models and your documents. And this, of course, is also a, a mobile access. So this is also included in the in the collection. Okay. <clears throat> 
I've gone through quite a lot of our solutions. Uh, the AC collection is really about design solutions for a project life cycle, as I said from the beginning. So this is what's included. Uh, I just want to add two things to this uh, to this webinar, and it's uh, the first thing is if we look at data management. So AC collection about design solution for a project life cycle, and you might have heard something about BIM 360. Uh, that's, it's important that you understand how that ties into the AC collection. So BIM 360 is our cloud-based data management services. And in BIM 360, we have a function that covers the whole life cycle of the project. So this is really where you collaborate, where you store your files, how you can automate your, your um, your drawings and, and really digitize uh, digitize your construction site. So for example if we are working in the design phase and we are working with CV3D, we take from the AC collection CV3D, uh, and Navisworks or Revit, we can push we can push our models to this cloud-based data system and we can for example do clash controls and design review uh, within this cloud solutions and we can communicate with our stakeholders, with v in viewers, etc, etc. So I just want to emphasize the importance to understand how, how, the, how our design solutions really ties into uh, our BIM360 portfolio. Okay, and <clears throat> lastly I would like to say a few words and show a video about uh, virtual reality. We can see virtual reality and augmented reality are huge trends right now. So we can see more and more interest in this area and, and more demands and also we can see both the software and hardware are improving. So the last year Autodesk released Autodesk Revit Live design and that's we simply press a one button from Revit you will transfer your Revit model to an interactive VR experience. So I will show this video. I will start this video. Let's see. Here we go. Live the sound. So you can take a look at how how it works. So if you have your design in Revit, see so you have your 2D drawing and you have your 3D model. If you look at add-ins, we have a button called Go Live. So it's really as simple as that. You press Go. Revit uploads to the cloud. It's preparing the model and preparing it for what we call Revit Live design. So this is the experience you get and you can use this on uh, desktop, you can use this on, on iPad. So you can look and you can navigate in the model and you can move around and really get that interactive VR, VR experience. You can also yeah, decide certain points of view, you can navigate in that way. And you can you can look at you know if it's if it's during night for example you can change the sun position. So if you want to see how the the lights looks like during the night you can you can change to to that and because it's modeled in in uh, a beam solution like revit you will get all the data now we also have this connector you can also connect this with uh, HTC Vive or Oculus Rift to make it this complete VR experience so in this you can see here we have, you can see in the right right corner how the guy has a HTC Vive equipment and how we can navigate and move around in the model. So we see the demand for this more and more. Of course there's a lot of opportunity how you collaborate and how you do a design review, how you, how you show your models to your stakeholders. If you look at that at infrastructure, we can also 
We can also bring bring the design through 3ds Max to Stingray to get this experience. Okay, so that was live design. I can see we have it's gone 50 minutes, so I will end this presentation here. Uh, just for more information, if you want to learn more about industry collection, I mean, I just touched a little about the different solutions included. There's, of course, much more information. Um, you can look at the Autodesk homepage where you can see what's in the collection. You can look more about the industry specific workflows, and, and you know, there is, is um, a fact out there that's, that's a lot of information.